The Trappist One Bunch, Seven Groovy Exoplanets. Welcome back to the Cosmic Companion. I'm James Maynard. This week we journey just 40 light years from our home examining the Trappist One family of planets. One of the most interesting families of worlds yet discovered by astronomers. Stories of solar systems all begin with a star, don't they? I mean, it's as good a place as any to start, isn't it? The stellar furnace at the center of this family of worlds is a cool red star, conveniently named Trappist-1. Less than 12% as large as our own sun and only 8% as massive, the Trappist-1 star was only discovered in the year 2000. The surface of this star radiating heat at just 2,260 degrees Celsius is hot enough to melt almost, but not all, metals. Darn you, Tungsten! In 2016, astronomers at the Transiting Oort Planets and Planetesimal Small Telescope, or TRAVIST, at La Silla Observatory in Chile, announced the discovery of three planetary candidates orbiting around a small, cool, red star. Follow-up observations by NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope confirmed the discovery of two of these worlds, now known as TRAPPIST-1b and C, and revealed the third candidate was not one, but three worlds, denoted EF and G. Two other planets, D and H, were also found in this intriguing solar system. Now, our current understanding suggests that water may be possible on any or all of these seven small, rocky, terrestrial planets. Even more intriguing, each solar system has a so-called habitable zone range of distances at which water may be able to pool on the surface of exoplanets. Amazingly, the TRAPPIST-1 system contains three of these worlds, TRAPPIST-1, E, F, and G, orbiting within this Goldilocks zone, where temperatures are neither too hot nor too cold for liquid water on the surfaces of planets. Now, the innermost planet, TRAPPIST-1b, orbits just 1% as far from its star as Earth keeps from the Sun. This close orbit whips this exoplanet around its star once every 36 hours. This super-Earth is a little over 37% more massive than Earth, and it's about 11% larger. TRAPPIST-1c, a second super-Earth, is around 30% more massive than our own world and about 10% larger. It orbits around, you know what, I'm just going to call it Little Red, once every 58 hours. The next groovy planet in this happening system, TRAPPIST-1d, is less than 40% as massive as Earth, with a diameter under 80% that of our own world. This terrestrial planet keeps thin by running around Little Red once every four days. It's a great exercise regime. Uh, TRAPPIST-1e is the first world in this system cool enough to be within the habitable zone of this planetary system. That doesn't mean that this world or any other exoplanets so far found are hospitable to human life. You do not want to go there on a vacation. What it does mean is that heat from our from the local sun would not be preventing water formation on most planets. Many other factors, including the presence or not of an atmosphere, can also factor into the equations. Now, another super-Earth, Trappist, TRAPPIST-1f, is the next stop on our journey. This world is nearly the exact same size as the Earth, and it sits within the heart of the habitable zone. A year here lasts just about nine days, as even this world, roughly halfway out in the solar system, is just 4% as far from its star as Earth is from the Sun. TRAPPIST-1g, orbiting the star at a more leisurely pace of once every 12 and a half days or so, is a super-Earth 13% larger and 32% more massive than Earth. 
It is also the most distant planet in the system, which still lies within the local Goldilocks zone of just right temperatures. Now, the outermost known planet in this system, TRAPPIST-1h, is a terrestrial planet about one-third as massive as Earth and about three-quarters as large. Each of these seven worlds holds the potential of hosting water, and each might be amenable to life. This system of small, rocky planets beckons to be explored. We are nowhere near being able to send robotic explorers to the TRAPPIST-1 system. However, the James Webb Space Telescope, the most advanced telescope ever sent to space, has already begun its observations of this intriguing family of exoplanets. Over the course of its operational lifetime, Around one-eighth of Webb's observing time will be dedicated to studying these seven groovy planets. And there is a very real possibility that the first signs of life outside of our own family of planets may be found one day in the TRAPPIST-1 system. Keep checking back. We'll, we'll keep letting you know what astronomers learn about these seven groovy exoplanets. If you enjoyed this episode, tell everyone you know to sign up for our mailing list at thecosmiccompanion.com. While you're at it, subscribe, follow, and share The Cosmic Companion all over your favorite social media. Heck, make lawn signs, paint your roof with our logo for airline passengers to see whatever you feel is right. No pressure. Join us next week on The Cosmic Companion as we imagine some of the weird life which might exist on other worlds. We can be joined once again by Stephanie Drimmer from National Geographic. Her new book, 5,000 Awesome Facts About Animals, teaches us about some of the weirdest, about some of the weirdest life on Earth. And we're going to be discussing what it could mean for life on other worlds. Join us at the Cosmic Companion starting on the 11th of October when we talk about what weird life on Earth can teach us about life in outer space. Clear skies.